Buckle up All Blacks fans, we're off to the quarters. The All Blacks securing their spot with a 73-0 win over Uruguay in Lyon. We unpack all that unfolded and take a look at what awaits. Kia ora, I'm Shuri Kinnear and this is Beyond the Game. Welcome in to the New Zealand Herald's Rugby World Cup video news show. I'm joined by News Talk ZV rugby commentator Elliot Smith. They're outside OL Stadium where the All Blacks have just left Uruguay scoreless. Now it wasn't an all perfect match and we will get into that shortly. But Elliot, job done. Five points they wanted out of it competition wise. They got them. They had it pretty much locked away before half time. It was scratchy for periods but if you put that score line to Ian Foster and the All Blacks at uh, the start of the game or just before the start of the game I think they would have uh, broken your arm off to take it. They've got the job done uh, and they can move on to the quarterfinals next week. The first half was a bit frantic, a lot of sloppy handling errors from the All Blacks too. How much time do you think they're going to spend reviewing that particular part of the game going forward? I think a lot. Yeah, it was scrappy. They couldn't quite get into the contest. They were probably pushing too many passes. They were playing things that weren't quite there, maybe chasing shadows a wee bit from an All Blacks perspective. Um, and, and just inaccurate. And, and the All Blacks were quite proud of their accuracy last week against the uh, Italians. I think in the opening 15 minutes, probably, they probably made more errors uh, in that opening 15 minutes tonight than they did in the 80 minutes last week. So it was untidy at times. And that gives the All Blacks something to work on. You know, a lot of those players won't be in the team, or at least the starting team next week. There's a lot of players to come back, but uh, it gives the All Blacks something to chew over and something to work on as they head to a quarterfinal. Well, we did speak to some of the players after the game to get their assessment and check in on how they're feeling ahead of the quarterfinals. Yeah, it was a bit of a grind to start with. Um, Uruguay hard on the ball and they disrupted us at the breakdown. And I've got um, yeah, Manuel Adeo there and he's a top turnover uh, recipient in the competition at the moment so we knew what we were expecting but unfortunately we couldn't knock it on the head early um, being boys yeah problem solved pretty quickly and we got onto the flow after that you know footy's not perfect and um, you know there are days where we do I guess get little starts like that but um, yeah like I mentioned before just the credit to the boys for problem solving and I guess staying in it you know um, can't really afford to crumble um, and yeah it's I think for us uh, moving into playoffs you know it's sort of a situation that we don't mind being put under and um, you know I know for sure moving forward there's going to be a lot of learnings out of it so yeah. We just worry about the day in front of us um, pretty much and we, we controlled our week again this week with great prep and treated Uruguay with the respect they deserve and um, we'll do that to whoever we're facing in the quarterfinals so it's exciting. This whole tournament we've um, been put in different situations and obviously tonight with, that, uh, with the, I guess the pressure that Uruguay put us under really um, I think gave us everything we need and I know there's still a lot to work on and um, I know the boys' excitement and uh, presence will be up for it heading into next week and um, you know I know that it's going to be full of excitement and um, I guess eagerness to get into it and uh, I guess represent our country with pride so yeah. Well Ian Foster made nine changes to his starting side for this game. Among those changes Damien McKenzie at fullback. What did you like from his performance? Yeah I thought he was good. Ran really solidly with direction, with purpose. So I thought it was a really good game from Damien. Bagged himself a couple of tries. I thought his kicking was good. Took over the goal kicking for a wee bit uh, as well. So I think um, all in all a pretty good performance from Damien McKenzie. And Ian Foster can just put that in his back pocket knowing that while Moonga and Barrett are their preferred starting combination, Damien McKenzie is still capable of playing both 10 and 15 at, at test level as well. I, I thought he was really, really good tonight and he can take a lot from that performance as they head to the knockout stages. Another player we just heard from before, Lester Fahinganuku, I thought had an excellent night. Three tries, World Cup hat-trick maker. Uh, and now a really interesting selection query for, or conundrum rather, for, for Ian Foster and his selectors over what they do with him. Do they put him on the bench next week? Looks to me like the ideal player that you'd want coming on. Um, against a team like an Ireland or South Africa, whoever it might be, and just causing some damage inside the final 20, 25 minutes of the game. Saw him a bit at midfield tonight as well, so another string to his bar. I think a good night for those two. Certainly was, and we've already mentioned that quarterfinals a few times. It feels good to finally be able to kind of talk about it now that it is locked in. Of course, the opponent's not properly locked in yet. It's either going to be Ireland or South Africa. Regardless, it's going to be a massive game. From what you saw tonight, how are you feeling in terms of hopes of being able to push through? I think I liked last week's performance better. Uh, tonight was a wee bit inaccurate. Uruguay um, you know, did what they could, especially in the opening 25 minutes, to put some pressure on the All Blacks. They fell out of it. Later on, I think if you're going to look at the two performances, you take a wee bit out of the Italian performance, but also what you need to work on out of the, the Uruguayan effort tonight for, for the All Blacks. So there are things to work on. Um, 
they are more than capable of beating Ireland, South Africa, Scotland, whoever it might be on their day, they're more than capable of doing so. The problem, obviously, is that these are all the top four sides in the world. Usually this is semi-final football. It's come a week early at the quarterfinals. The All Blacks need to rise to the occasion, whoever they get, um, and play you know, one of the best matches of the last four years. Certainly it's going to be a really big week ahead. Before we go, though, let's take a quick look at the points table to see how things stand in Pool A. We're currently on top with 15, but one pool game remains, France versus Italy, so this won't be the final standings, but the All Blacks are locked in to the quarterfinals thanks to the bonus point they picked up today. The final game's result will determine which quarterfinal match we progress to. Well, that's it from us here signing off from OL Stadium. Thank you so much for joining me, Elliot. A big week ahead for the All Blacks. We'll be keeping you up to date with all of the latest Thanks for joining us on Beyond the Game. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.